A very good morning to you. Welcome to another edition of Hello Day with me, Shiko Kaitani. We shall hope that, of course, you have enjoyed our chit chat on Why in the Morning, courtesy of Hilda Wadidi, uh, the lovely Kalami Val, and of course, Mr. Barry Moses. That SMS number is still the same. It is 22162 if you want to interact with us. Please begin your text message with YM254. And of course, if you do prefer those social media handles, well, they are Y254TV on Instagram and Facebook and Y254 channel on Twitter. Now, it just so happens that the first Tuesday of the month of May is World Asthma Day. But as we all know, Labor Day fell on Tuesday. And so the world continues to create awareness about asthma this entire week. And so this time around, we actually do want to discuss a condition that's pretty common. We come around it. And uh, believe it or not, more than 300 million people around the world actually suffer from asthma. And so today we discuss how we can recognize asthma control it and prevent it in studio with me I'm really excited to have medical officer dr. Lillian Moko who's going to share more with us Karibu sana thank you very much yeah we're really happy to have you thanks okay so uh, let's get into our discussion and discuss really the basics what exactly is asthma um, so asthma is a chronic condition it's a condition of the airway, that is a condition of the system that takes in air into our lungs mm -hmm. and takes it out, takes out the air. Yeah. It's a, a chronic condition where you have the airways get inflamed, that mm -hmm. it means they swell up mm -hmm. and thus they restrict the flow of air in and out of the lungs. Yes, okay. Yeah. Now we hear a lot about how allergies come into play when we talk about asthma, that there's something in the environment that probably triggers how someone's airwaves react or, you know, so to speak. Can you tell us how allergies actually tie in? Okay, so asthma is actually considered mainly as an allergic condition. Mm. So you have most of the people who have asthma yeah. are usually allergic to many other substances or mm. most of the people who have allergies also tend to have asthma. Yeah. But also there are various forms of asthma that don't really have to be intertwined with allergies. Mm. But when you look at the allergic as aspect, yeah. mainly the people who have asthma and allergies are the people who have a family history of allergies mm -hmm. and they they're also the people who basically have um, their their they either have a family history of allergy their parents have had allergy or yeah. they're allergic to substances so mm -hmm. they end up having asthma as a sequel of the allergy mm. so mm. Yeah, that is it basically. Okay, okay. And um, I know allergies can really be a, a murky area. Um, uh, how does one actually go about understanding or discovering what they're allergic to? So basically for allergies, you find that um, most of the allergies manifest themselves when someone is young mm. because allergies are an intertwined they, there's an intertwinement between genetic predisposition okay. and the environmental triggers. So most of the people who have allergies will manifest the symptoms when they are children. Yeah. And people are allergic to various things. Mm -hmm. So you'll find that when you're exposed to an allergen, when you're exposed to something that your body reacts to, right. then you develop certain symptoms. Mm -hmm. Different people develop symptoms in different areas, like the people who have manifestations with the eyes, we yeah. call that allergic conjunctivitis, mm -hmm. where you find that the eyes will start running, you yeah. have itching eyes, mm -hmm. and maybe painful eyes that turn red yeah. when you're exposed to the allergen. Mm -hmm. There are manifestations that manifest in the nose, right. so you might have sneezing mm -hmm. running quite a nose, bit yeah and yeah like an itchiness in the nose yeah there are people who even have the clearing of the throat and the husking when they are that is still a manifestation in the throat okay okay then there are people who also have the symptoms that manifest on their skins so when you're exposed to the allergen you begin to get a some rash swelling, okay, yeah. itchiness and uh -huh. a rash in the lungs also yeah. where it manifests itself as asthma ah. where you have cough yeah chest tightness mm -hmm. and wheezing mm -hmm. and difficulty in breathing wow okay so um one can actually go out and get this test done or you pretty much learn along the way <laughs> so basically for most of the times when you're a child before yeah. five years yeah 
children actually they manifest with the symptoms just okay. like i said when they are very young mm. they they present with the symptoms but most of the times is an overlap because children have a very small airway mm -hmm. so you find that doctors find it a bit difficult yes. to differentiate to whether the point. child is allergic yeah. or it's just a a common ailment mm -hmm. like a common cold that manifests itself as mm. the allergic symptoms yeah but with time what you find is above six years old yeah. if a child is persistently presenting with the symptoms mm -hmm. that 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 point towards an allergy to sub to a certain substance mm -hmm. then that is considered to be an allergy okay but other than the history examination the doctor has to do some physical examination yeah where they listen to your chest mm -hmm. they look at your symptoms they mm -hmm. look at the lesions that you have on your skin like the manifestations of allergy on your on your body yeah and they also look at um, they do some lab tests so we have some allergy tests that yeah. are conducted mm -hmm. they might be a bit expensive mm -hmm. and for the people who have asthma there are some lung function tests that okay. can be done and on top of that the doctor also has to do other tests yeah. to rule out other illnesses that mm. may manifest themselves as yeah allergy or allergic conditions okay so you know uh, a lot of people uh, in terms of a layman's perspective would yeah. probably uh, see okay uh, asthma as just a cough right yeah. but how, how are we able to actually recognize that and say okay by the way I think this time no this is different it's not just your regular cough okay for asthma one this person will have there's a pattern to the cough the okay. cough is not just any other cough because mm. it will either be a persistent cough that presents itself either when you're exposed to something or when it is very cold mm -hmm. or sometimes or in most of the patients it yeah. comes at night mm -hmm. so you find that they have a nighttime cough or yes. a cough when it's cold mm -hmm. then the cough also has triggers like if you walk into a room where people have a strong perfume you yeah. find yourself coughing so those are the things that that happen to your body or that those are the things that could help you maybe think that you're developing some asthma uh -huh. so you need to be exposed to something yeah in order for the symptoms to come out okay true. there are yeah, patients who sense. have chronic symptoms of mm -hmm. asthma throughout mm -hmm. the year or yeah. throughout the day mm -hmm. and those are the people who mainly are not controlled mm -hmm. so they are not treated so you find that their asthma is out of control and they have the symptoms every day so they probably wow. don't have a pattern yeah, yeah. okay um, i know we we've probably everybody has probably come across someone who's probably dealing with asthma yeah. even seen an asthma attack can you really describe to us what what happens in the body when someone's actually having an asthma attack so what happens is that when you're having an asthmatic attack um you you're exposed to the the trigger or the yeah. thing that makes you get the attack right and the airway is is the airway is a trachea and the bronchioles mm -hmm. and they go direct into the lungs right so what happens is that your body is mounts an immune attack mm -hmm. that means the body's immune system recognizes whatever is uh, causing the trigger so the body decides to attack what is causing the trigger mm -hmm. and some of the ways in which it causes the attack is that there is release of certain cells they okay. call them the inflammatory cells yeah and so these cells cause a series of reactions in your body and mm -hmm. one of the reactions is that there's an increase in secretions yeah in the within the system mm -hmm. which is a defense mechanism for the body to try and expel the irritant oh right so yeah. And the second thing that happens is that so you have a lot of mucus within your airway, mm -hmm. which are a bit a bit small. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that the muscles that line the airway, yeah. they go into constriction, mm -hmm. so they cause the airway to be smaller. Yeah, and this is also a, a still the same kind of thing, like a, a defense mechanism for yeah. the body to say the air is bad or whatever it is is causing. So it starts tightening. Yeah. So it just starts tightening to prevent further air from coming in oh from coming right. out. okay and so that is when you find the patient presents with the symptoms where you feel like your chest is tight uh -huh. there's cough in an attempt to expel the mucus mm -hmm. which has trapped the foreign materials yes 
so there's a lot of coughing there's the wheezing mm -hmm. wheezing is caused by the the narrowed airway so As yeah it's difficult to breathe to yeah. go in and out mm -hmm. and then you have difficulty in breathing because you really have to struggle to push out yeah air from the small narrow airway wow okay so mm -hmm. those that that is how it mainly manifests yeah and as a result of that the patient goes in the, or the person goes into like some sort of panic yes so sometimes many people mm -hmm. confuse an asthmatic attack with a panic attack okay. because yeah it's, it's pretty much it, almost the yeah, same it yeah, looks like yeah the patient is going or the person is going into a panic attack yeah and they start they, they feel restless mm -hmm. there's a lot of anxiety because yeah. air can't go in mm -hmm. and it can just sp spiral down and end up being lethal yeah by the way yeah let's even speak about that because i i've had even um some doctors say or especially say that asthma is kind of like you're drowning in your own body you know like literally uh, when is asthma actually considered deadly so what happens is when you have a mild attack yeah then that one can be controlled with medication okay but sometimes you have people who get the attack and they're not able to recognize the attack or they are not able to take the medication that prevents the attack from going on further. Mm -hmm. So the body still, and they still do not leave the environment, like they are still exposed to the same thing that yeah. is causing them to have the attack. Mm. So the cascade of symptoms progress, right. and they reach to a point where you are not able to breathe in enough oxygen, mm -hmm. so you kind of uh, suffocate yeah. in yourself, mm -hmm. and you are not able to take out the carbon dioxide that is accumulating in your body mm -hmm. which is a bit toxic to your body so it causes some symptoms within your body yeah so at some point the airway gets so narrow mm -hmm. that you actually stop wheezing because you know you really struggle to breathe so yeah. your muscles get tired yeah and uh, the airway continues narrowing it gets to a point there's nothing you're literally pushing out yeah so at that point mm. that is a stage of asthma which we call a silent chest which is actually a medical emergency wow and you find that at that point you some people may think that okay the asthmatic attack is finished because yeah. mm. there's no more wheezing mm -hmm. the patient is not struggling yeah but it's actually fatal because at that point you easily will slip into a coma mm -hmm. and you can die due to lack of oxygen, oxygen and yeah. uh, or you might need icu care for a quite a period of time due to due to that wow okay um uh, 22162 is that sms number if you would like to ask dr lillian any uh question concerning asthma i'm going to ask my director to queue up uh, some feedback if we do have any and we'll be glad to actually take a look at some of your feedback that being said um we see that people who are asthmatic of course are dependent on inhalers um can you tell us what the inhalers actually do for these patients and with time has there been any improvements of course in medically to reduce the dependency on inhalers so actually it depends on the type of mm. asthma you have people have this tendency to think that all asthmatics must have an inhaler ah, or right. all asthmatics are dependent on the inhaler but mm. according to the the global international initiative for yeah. asthma control mm -hmm. you find that in the asthma is classified into mm -hmm. four four groups yeah so you have the uh, mild asthma mm -hmm. the, or the intermittent asthma then yes. you have the mild asthma then you have the moderate and yeah. the severe asthma okay in these cases different patients need different kind of care mm -hmm. for a person who has intermittent asthma that is symptoms that come in once in a while yeah like less than two mm -hmm. times in a week mm -hmm. then they just need one type of inhaler mm -hmm. to control the sim the symptoms there's yeah. a short short-term medication that is used mm -hmm. and there's long-term medication mm -hmm. so you find these are the patients who have the short-term inhaler yeah. which is mainly the blue salbutamol inhalers yeah which we commonly which see the every time they yeah. feel like i can't breathe there's yeah. some and as i'm about to have an asthmatic attack they spray into their mouth yeah and it helps to control the symptoms mm -hmm. and it has no additive effect it is yeah. not yeah. it is not a di it's it has nothing that makes them dependent okay, okay it's just that they have a chronic condition mm -hmm. which will not go away yeah it's something that they were born with mm -hmm. and they will have to stay for it so they have to use it to control their life to control to make their life easier and okay better. okay the people who have intermittent symptoms or some moderate moderately severe symptoms yeah 
These are people who might need more than one inhaler. Mm -hmm. So they need the short acting inhaler and mm -hmm. they also need the long acting or the long term inhalers. Yeah. Which are basically steroids that you apply to your airway. Uh -huh. Maybe every day yeah. so that they can control the symptoms mm -hmm. and to prevent the exacerbations. Okay. What they do is that they keep the immune system low. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the inflammatory reaction is a bit on the lower side. Yes. So you don't get the symptoms quite often. Okay. Okay. Then you have the people who have severe, the severe form of asthma who probably need more than two inhalers mm -hmm. because they need inhalers that will even help to control the the trigger symptoms you also need to be on some oral steroids uh -huh. or some oral uh -huh. medication yeah to help with the mm -hmm. to help with the symptoms so basically there are different types of inhalers there's a the main thing is that you need to yeah. know that you have the short acting inhalers yes. and the long acting ones yeah the short acting ones are to help prevent the attack or to help to control the acute mm -hmm. attack mm -hmm. the long acting one is to prevent further exacerbations to help to keep it in co control right we have advances have yeah. additional mm -hmm. information mm -hmm. additional medications that yeah. are being used currently people are using even immune modulators that is drugs that help to modulate the immune system yes which are mainly expensive and probably they are used for the people who have uh, severe symptoms. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Um, I, there's a lot of talk about how, by the way, if you do have asthma, and I, you know, the, of course, this being a youth channel, um, a lot of um, uh, people who, you know, you come across with asthma kind of feel alienated. There's a lot of stigma that comes around it because they don't feel like, by the way, they can live a normal life. Um, can you talk about the kind of restrictions that, you know, one has to endure when they have this condition, by the way? So basically, it's asthma is not a death sentence. Yeah. The main thing is you need to know that you have it. Mm -hmm. So you need to be aware that you have the asthma. Yeah. And the second thing is that you need to know that what your triggers are or mm. what triggers your asthma. Is your asthma and due to pollen? Mm -hmm. Is your asthma due to dust? Is okay. your asthma due to cold? Yeah. And once you know what triggers your asthma, then together with your doctor, you can work towards controlling your symptoms mm. because then you can avoid the allergens. Yeah. You can avoid the things that cause you to have the asthmatic attack. Mm -hmm. And together with using the medication, because sometimes you may not entirely be able to avoid it. Yes. Then you can be able to have a normal life like anybody else. Yeah. So it's all about controlling the symptoms taking your medication, knowing what causes your triggers, mm. knowing yourself yeah. and preventing yourself from getting the, mm -hmm. the, the, the adverse effects or getting the acute exacerbations of asthma, yeah. then you can be fine. Okay. I think you can live a normal life. There yeah. are basically no restrictions. Mm -hmm. The restrictions come in what you're allergic to yeah. or what your body is reacting to. Okay. So if your body is reacting to cold, then keep, keep warm, keep yourself warm. Okay. If your body is reacting to to dust, yeah. then make sure your environment is clean. Avoid using carpets or avoid yeah. rooms that have carpets, stuffy right. rooms. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think you can live a normal life just like anybody else. Okay, great. I like this text message that's coming um, uh, from Sheila, uh, Dr. Lillian, and she actually brings up the aspect about lifestyle. How does your lifestyle actually uh, affect whether or not you would actually contract asthma? And so she says things like, you know, going clubbing, drinking, because of course <laughs> those are very huge concerns as you're growing up yeah. so you know I, I mean because people actually feel like okay people who have asthma can't do these things you know like you uh, what do you have to say about that in terms of lifestyle so and what they eat even in terms of diet uh, in terms of uh, in terms of your lifestyle yeah I think your lifestyle is supposed to be your personal choice yeah but then you find that most people who have asthma the acute exacerbations can be triggered by certain things yeah the people who have um, who have allergy to proteins, yeah. then the exacerbations could be triggered by by beef or eating a lot of meat. Yeah. So in that case, then they'll have to live a lifestyle where they avoid taking excessive meat or they avoid actually taking meat at mm -hmm. all. Yeah. Uh, same thing for asthma. It's an airway disease. Mm -hmm. And as we all know that most of the airway diseases are affected or they're triggered by substances that... Uh, 
cause irritation to the airway. Ah. So going out, there's a lot of smoke, there's a lot of secondhand smoke. Yes. Uh, thank God the shisha was burnt. <laughs> maybe it's in your house. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you might find that uh, yeah. such people with asthma mm. actually react to the smoke. Right. So and they also react to the whole cold environment. Yeah. So if you can go to a place and avoid going to a smoking zone, mm -hmm. then it is okay. You can club. Okay. Or if, but then you'll find that whenever you go and you expose yourself to the smoke, yeah, it may trigger an asthmatic attack or mm -hmm. it may trigger an an acute exacerbation in your okay in okay your system. Yeah. All right. Uh, we've got one here that's come in from George who says, "What is your advice to those who have asthma in terms of?" how to live and control and manage their asthma. What are the do's and don'ts as we wrap up, simply put? So, as I said, yeah. there's no written yeah. book on this is what you should do and this is what you should not do. Mm -hmm. uh, because it is all about individualized care. Right. I could have an asthma that is triggered by exercise. You could be having an asthma that is triggered by dust. Yes. So that means that what the doctor will tell you to do and not to do yeah. is different from what I will tell you to do. Right, because everybody, do. okay, it's so a different case. So because everybody yeah. is different. So basically the main thing is knowing yourself, mm -hmm. knowing what causes your asthma, or what triggers your asthma, mm -hmm. knowing what you, then that way you can discuss with your doctor and you can come to like an agreement mm. on what you should do and what you should not do. What yeah, you know. well, if you really need to be carrying this around, you know, yeah, every but single for day. Every person who's yeah. asthmatic, I think it is always wise to carry around your inhaler, the short acting inhalers. Right. Because if you happen to go to a place where you're exposed to an allergen, sometimes you might not even know you know that. Yeah, that's, uh, that is, that's the, the crazy part about it. Yeah. A situation and you find that you actually are reacting to the substance. Yeah. So in that case, then you need to carry your inhaler so that if you get the symptoms coming, mm -hmm. then you can use it and it can control your symptoms. Great. Then okay. You know Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to wrap it up there, Dr. Lillian Moko, but uh, we, we, we really appreciate it. Thank you so Thank much. You.